Okay, howdy guys. We will be installing a smart switch today into this awesome adventure motorcycle. Adding spark lights to the front of it and uh, an additional brake light to the rear and hooking all of that up to the canvas so we can use the handlebar controls to operate the whole thing. Okay, what we have here is the installation diagram that we used to refer to for all the details. Uh, the can splitter cable that's going to be used to actually tap onto the canvas of the motorcycle. We have the smart switch itself. And that's just a little box here with all the little lights on it and the wires coming out of it. All potted completely waterproof. And then the installation harness with a uh, inline fuse and battery terminal wiring. And that's what we'll be hooking up to the motorcycle today. Okay, what we'll be installing is these 10 watt LED spotlights, uh, just generic 12 volt 10 watt LED, uh, they're about 900 odd lumens or so, pretty bright enough for other vehicles to see you. We've got a brake light here, which is an LED based one, um, three LEDs inside there, burns nice, bright and red, and that'll be added to the back for an additional brake light, and then what I'll also be adding is... A remote onto that so I can use the motorcycle standard controls to open and close my gate. Okay, what we've got is the spotlights mounted on the front, wiring going in behind the little uh, shroud here, up behind the radiator, and it comes up here right in front of the tank where it just follows the same path as the standard wiring. Okay, we have the spotlight wire coming down behind the tank, meets up over here with the bike standard channeling and the power wires with the inline fuse. Always remember the inline fuse, never install without a fuse. That will get installed connected to the positive terminal over there, right behind the diagnostic plug, and the ground terminal of the battery is right there. They follow the wiring channel, which comes up underneath here where the ECU is located, right in the corner of the ECU and it runs and it comes up out of the back here, ready to be connected to the smart switch harness. Okay, we've got the whole harness wired now, the smart switch plug. There are two outputs and the two inputs that are not used on this installation. And um, we have it all here, we have the remote just enclosed in plastic here to keep it nice and watertight. Before we tape all this up and make it neat, let's have a look here. We've got the power coming in already connected to the battery with the inline fuse. We have the left and right spotlight coming in on the brown and orange wires of smart switch itself. And we have the remote and we have the brake light wire. All of this should now be okay once we connect it to smart switch. Now remember, smart switch is only connected directly to the battery and it plugs in onto your bike's CAN bus which is this little uh, cable or connector here. What we're going to do is remove it from the tire pressure sensor, take the little inline cable, and what we do is plug the female in there, and plug this one back in to there. Oop, other way around. Okay, so the bike scan harness still goes directly to the tire pressure monitoring system, we are just listening in on the CAN bus. Smart switch itself gets connected, the main harness plugged in, the CAN harness plugs in here, and that's it. The little programming cable will be used if we want to make changes to the rules and stuff. So before we tape it all up, let's give it a quick test. We're going to turn the bike on now, after a second or two, the light, yellow light should come on for cane activity. Some of the green lights should activate for the outputs that turn on. Here we go. Look at that. We've got comms, we've got outputs. Great stuff. Right. We've got the spotlights going. They should be indicating left with the indicators. Or right with the right hand indicators. Or coming on with the brights as well. That's a little bit bright, sorry. Cameraman flinching there. Sorry cameraman. Okay, all's good. And uh, flashing inversely with the 
has a transverse arm. It seems all is working. Okay, guys, just to reiterate, on the diagram here, we can see um, the standard basic connection diagram for the smart switch. You've got your two spotlights, a remote control, and your brake light. On the output side of it, you've got a battery that you connect to, and the CAN bus. That is really all you need to connect. So let's just go through those quickly in detail. On the smart switch itself, we have Going through the wires one by one, we've got the red, which is your battery positive power. Black, which is ground or negative power. And there are two additional black ones for you to connect, so you don't have to run a lot of wires to the battery negative. Okay. And then we've got the uh, brown wire. If we can get that out from these here. The brown wire goes to your left-hand spotlight. That is output number one. The orange wire is output number two that goes to your right hand spotlight the yellow wire is output number three we use that for our little remote control the green wire is output number four and that's hooked up to the wire for the additional brake light the blue and purple or blue and violet is output number five and six which i'm not using on this installation and then the grey and white are the two additional inputs you have that you can wire onto any switch which I'm not using on my installation. That's it as far as the outputs are concerned. You have the CAN bus cable that we showed just now going in line with the CAN bus and that's just the programming connector which is not used.